Well, the boat's in chaos. Um, Gainer has gone off to visit family. And so I'm going to do the jobs that it's difficult to do while Gainer's about. I'm having a quick lunch from my trouble. Part of the reason the jobs are difficult to do while Gainer's about is two people on board is just a lot more than one person aboard, but also Gainer does have asthma and this stuff, the yacht varnish, stinks. I mean it is as high as a kite. I will have all the hatch soap and the boat will be freezing. But it means that I can get some var um, varnishing done on woodwork that has been damaged over the years. I mean it's a 20 year old boat and you're going to have varnish that needs doing it. The chart table is just showing wear. People dragging charts across it, using it as a table, doing all sorts of things. The varnish is beginning to degrade and it's only a matter of time until the varnish is gone and the wood is unprotected. So I'm sanding that down, that will get two coats of varnish. We also have over there, in this section here, on that side, uh, we had a little bit of water damage that we think came in through the stanchions. Now we replaced all the stanchion bases in the summertime, and we've got a video to it, the link up there. And um, it now appears to be dry, but the thing is, the varnish is damaged because it was damaged beforehand, before we replaced the bases. So since that's on Gainer's side where she sits, I've taken all that out, I've sanded it back, it's going to get cleaned off, and that's going to get done. And there are other spots in a boat, spots that get cold, and if anything on a boat gets cold, especially at this time of year, what you tend to wind up with is condensation. And it collects in corners and eventually it affects woodwork and varnish and things like that. Like under the V-Birth, we re-varnished that a couple of years ago. Um, just because once again the varnish had degraded with 20 years, just as simple as that. For damp that collects under the mattresses, we use a product called Dry Mat, which you can see here that we fitted when we were in Scotland. And it keeps the mattress off the wooden base and lets air circulate under it. And that stops the mould in the mattress. For other condensation problems that you tend to get on the inside of the hull. We bought camper van insulation um, which is self-adhesive closed cell foam about one centimeter thick and we've got episodes for that and we'll put a link to it up above. We really need to do the back berth same reason there's one particular corner in the back berth where the varnish is in a very bad way. Um, it's probably the coldest part in the boat so I will chip that varnish off sand it back the wood underneath is still sound if I get new varnish on the wood will be protected. But what all this is leading into is condensation on a boat is, in this time of year, quite frankly a pain. And because if you get damp aboard, you get problems like this. So one of my little jobs today, apart from doing the varnishing, is I'm also going to talk about what we do to keep down condensation on the boat. And I'll throw in one or two other things while I'm at it, which is nothing to do with condensation. But what the heck, we need a bit of variety or we'll all go mad watching this. So. I'll catch up with you after I've had my sausages, chilies, and toast. Just me. It's a weird mix, but there you go. Oh. Oh, well, it's well deserved coffee break time. So, I'm having this. All the stuff I need to sand has now been sanded. On the good news front, because there was some, what I thought was a very, very badly affected piece of varnish in the back berth actually turned out to be a bit of fiberglass tabbing. <laughs> when I looked at it closely under bright light I could clearly see strands of fiberglass in it so it is not varnish. So that's okay. Um, so that particular bit I've just sanded around that. My next job is to clean everything with white spirit and that's where it starts to get nasty because I'll have to open it all the boat up and it's minus one outside. Um, so I'm going to do just leave the heating on. Um, the heating is in the Eberspacher which is in the transom and so it's not in this vapour area and it blows warm air through the boat. So I'm hoping that the worst of the volatiles will leave the boat very quickly. I'm going to open the main hatch, which is beside an area I'm varnishing. I'm opening this hatch and I'm opening these two hatches. And I mentioned um, condensation earlier. So talking about opening hatches brings me back to condensation because one of our methods of combating condensation is to keep the boat well ventilated. Basically, if you keep air trapped in the boat and you're in the boat, breathing out water vapour. Um, even this, I mean it's hot coffee so water evaporates. So if you can see the water evaporating, if I can see it in front of me it's called steam. Cups of coffee 
put water into the boat. Um, if you're washing up at the sink, don't leave the hot water in the sink. As soon as you're washed up, get it off the boat. Get the, pull the plug and let it out, because otherwise that hot water sits in there emitting steam, and the steam then condenses as water, and it's in the boat. Um, if your boat isn't well ventilated, that water stays here. And when it cools down at night, it sticks to all the surfaces and condenses on them, and then it runs down the inside and collects and pulls and does all sorts of nasty stuff. So you don't want water on your boat. Um, now, we have a number of ways of combating it. For little parts that are closed in and things, we, we buy these little we buy these little ball things, the boxes full of balls, and gradually they do absorb water. And they call themselves dehumidifiers. But compared to the one that we keep under the table here, um, they collect very, very little water. So if you, I've been told that if you're not aboard the boat, which to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience of, I spent a lot of time aboard, but I've been told that if you're not aboard the boat, just keeping a few hatches cracked open will provide enough ventilation to keep the boat good. Open all your lockers like we do. You may notice behind me, we generally have these up. Sometimes we're filming, we put them down just to have a nice background to film on. But for today's, I've left them all up. You can see all the stuff in behind there just the way it is, but it means that the air in these lockers doesn't go stale and stale air breeds mould and if there's any damp the mould just takes hold and boom it's game over. So keeping the condensation down, either we find the best one is the dehumidifier. We Using it we can keep the relative humidity of this boat under 50% and if we do that condensation by and large cannot get hold so that's good. Um, where do I go from here? Good question isn't it? I'm talking to myself in the edit. Hello me. Probably a chocolate. Yeah, I'd forgotten about the door. The uh, wood on this panel, being where it is, gets a huge amount of UV damage coming in through the hatch. And this side was slightly lighter than that side, so I suspect what's happened is for a number of years this boat has sat on an east-west orientation and the, uh, this has been the northward panel with the sun coming down, streaming on it. But um, hopefully now they'll both come up the same colour now that I've taken the, uh, the old varnish off. Uh, the varnishing is done. And yes, I am sitting here in my thermal gear. Because I've got every hatch in the boat wide open. Because this stuff stinks. I know it's got a high volatile content, but God, this stuff stinks to high heaven. So. I'm letting all the volatiles get out of the boat. I've got the heating on to keep the varnish warm so that hopefully it evaporates more quickly and uh, when it starts getting really cold tonight I can close all the hatches but I suspect I'll be sleeping with hatches open tonight. I should pay for varnishing in winter. It's one Celsius outside, it's 20 in here. I'll just have to put up with it. I want the job done, I want the varnish done, I want the things fixed. And I've got the thermals so I'm nice and snug. Ah, and to keep the inside snug, it's a cup of tea time. Hello and welcome to Viewer Question of the Week. This is a new feature which has been created by leaving me alone to watch paint dry. Okay, well it's varnished, it's not paint, but you get the idea. Ah, so, we've been asked questions um, to do videos on by viewers of the channel and one of the ones that has come up recently is what do you use for your logbook? Do you buy a logbook of a particular format or do you make up your own? Um, we have covered this in past videos but it's worth doing a recap because it's giving me something to do while the varnish dries. So well, I should point out that I'm quite happy with how the varnish has dried. The first coat is come out well on this. I've got to give it a light sanding and put the second coat on but before I do that I'm sitting here and enjoying it and I'm going to do the question on logbooks. So to answer the question do you buy them or do you make your own the answer is yes to both. Uh, when we initially got the boat we bought our logbook we bought the RYA sailing logbook and we started using it and it worked very very well for us it was a great introduction to everything we wanted but it did have some defects um, the major defect is the fact that um, on the middle of each page there's a lot of columns we just never used. Sometimes you would do a short passage and you would wind up with literally a few lines on a page. Um, so that was the thing. Um, 
they're, they're more expensive than buying a book so that's a downside but it's not a huge expense I mean you only buy one every couple of years you know a couple of cups of coffee would sort it out um, but when we were finished with it we decided we would do our own log book and we now do and we now we just bought this which is slightly larger size comparisons and this is just an A4 notebook um, and we, we now use this and we only put in now the columns we actually want which is good the downside is they were a little untidy in our layout and we need to get better at that that's just one of the things we need to improve on um, the layout we just need to make it clearer but other than that this is working well for us and because it starts as blank pages we have created a template and there's a link to it on our website which I will um, put in the description below and we use this to mark the columns out and put everything in place so at the end of the day if you're doing this for the first time you've never had a logbook before I would say buy one just buy your first one and have a look at it and at the end of a couple of years because that will probably last you a few years decide what it is you want from your logbooks and if you're happy buying this if it's the right book for you go and buy another one if it's not you can then buy a blank one maybe make up a little template like we did and lay things out so the original one had um, a tide panel and a weather panel opposite each other and we have maintained that we have our tide panel and we have our weather panel it then has down here all the course information um, date time speed direction latitude longitude things like that and opposite on this page it has comments so we have maintained that as well we have our information here we have our comments on this side um, so the difference between these two is because ours is a free format book if we only use half the page for a passage we can use the bottom half of the page for the next passage if it's a short one um, another improvement we have made is the way we lay the weather out the original RYA one had one piece for passage weather we have two pieces for passage weather one for the current weather and one for the next 24 hours we just find that more useful because quite often a passage will take us overnight uh, other than that there's not a lot of changes we've taken the crew panel off because we always have the same crew on board um, and if we don't we mention it in the comments uh, we've also taken off the waypoint panel because we do that in a passage planning book which is a totally separate book to this this is a record of where we were and what we did passage planning book is a list of things that let us know where we're going and what we can expect to see and what our alternatives are when the tides come in and such like so the passage planning book is much more detailed than this and we have that in a separate book from the log book anyway that's that and it's time for me to get the sandpaper out and start keying this off so I can put the second coat on and then hopefully by tomorrow the second coat will be enough and like I say I'm very pleased with how the first coat has gone on so I have great hopes for the second and if you've got any more viewer questions by all means do send them in we do have another couple in reserve and we'll see if we can get those sorted out but um, if you have questions do send them in well it's been a couple of days and I'm glad to say it has dried out absolutely beautifully it's lovely and smooth and clean and a vast improvement and the same is true of the companion ways and the other areas so I'm very very pleased with how it's come out so I'm going to leave things there this week um, next week Gainer will be back I can absolutely guarantee you that Gainer will be back because it's not the penguin holding the camera Honestly, I'm not being left out. I'm a member of this crew too, you know. And when it comes to keeping a boat dry, the one thing that's really helped is these cloth covers I made. Um, it's really cut down the condensation inside the boat in around the uh, windows.